Have you ever wanted to be prosperous, successful, and just maybe famous? You ever wished for that? Yeah? Well, before you, uh, you know, express those wishes to Hashem, think about it twice. Uh, because many famous people, uh, if you observe their lives, they invest an incredible amount of their resources, an incredible amount of effort just to have privacy and peace in their lives. Things that ordinary people enjoy with absolutely no trouble whatsoever. Now, uh, the stars, as people call them today, they can't just go out in public. They can't go anywhere without paparazzi jumping out and following them everywhere and annoying every single thing they do. Every move. People recognize them as they go everywhere. They stop them, they flag them down, they bother them. They can't just park their car and pop into a store to get a couple of things like you and I. They can't just go and take their kids to play in the park or a playground. They can't even walk by the seaside and just enjoy the sand and the water unless it's a private beach and there's actually nobody there to bother them. So think twice before you think about asking for success or fame or riches or anything like that. And so when someone notices somebody famous, they usually point them out and they say to others, oh, look who it is, and now all this unwanted attention happens. Uh, and it's hard for people to do just whatever it is that they want to do to go about their daily lives because they're constantly being barraged by somebody wanting to look at them or shake their hand or get their autograph or whatever it is uh, that people are chasing them for. Now, think about rich people, billionaires. Because they're billionaires, it's also... Uh, hard for them. They're constantly at risk. They're constantly at risk of somebody grabbing them or their children or some other relative or person related to them and just holding them for ransom to extort money out of them. Can you imagine constantly fearing that somebody in your family is just going to be grabbed just because you're rich and people are looking to make money off of you and perpetrating crimes like that? So you know, with wealth, fame, riches, all these kinds of things that we don't always think about, comes the considerable downside. And, and some people would say, I'll take the downside, you know, maybe, maybe you're like Tevye in the movie. If, if wealth and riches is such a curse, may you curse me, may I never recover, right? <laughs> so we all love that line, because we all can uh, identify, I guess, with the poor milkman, right? Um, so the opening of the book of uh, Exodus Shemot is, it tells us actually a similar story. I don't know if you realize this or not, but the story is of prosperity and success that comes with a price. And that's the title of my drash, the success that comes with your price. The book begins, of course, with the names of Jacob's sons, as they recalled. That's why it's called Shemot, means names in Hebrew. And then the Torah tells us how the family grew and expanded, how they became blessed. God blessed them, and it says that they became pretty numerous. So it seems, on the first glance, that God is fulfilling all the promises that he has given to Abraham. Did he not say, I'm going to multiply you and make you numerous and prosperous? Well, you could see this is happening, so we should rejoice and be happy, except they're not in a land that's been promised to them. They're in Egypt. And that makes all the difference in the world. So sometimes I think Torah, it shows us that success is prosperity can come with a price. And that's what I think this segment, this portion, is actually uh, at least drawing my attention to. Israel was blessed, but that blessing became a problem. A new king, it says, arose in, in Egypt, a king that did not know Joseph and his family, so whatever favors that they might have had going for them evaporated. He looked at the host of these strange, weird, bearded people who definitely are not Egyptians, and he said, uh, I don't know who these people are, and I'm not sure I can trust them. They definitely do not look like they belong. So to control them, he subdued them and enslaved them, an entire clan. That's what the Torah says. And so we remember this experience, of course, every Pesach as we sit down to celebrate, remember this tragic moment in our history, and then the redemption too. 
So, but there are a few spiritual lessons uh, that I think this simple narrative that we all know has to tell us, and the very opening of Book of Shemot. And these are truths that I think can apply to our everyday lives very, very simply, even though these are all ancient stories. Now, often, uh, you know, we experience suffering, and the tendency for many of us is to immediately think that God is punishing me for something that I have done. It's very, very common for people to look for that. It's, you know, it's not a bad question to look inside, do a little cheshbon nefesh, a little accounting of your soul, and to see if there is, maybe indeed something is wrong. Um, not, not a bad approach to life, let's put it that way. But you can't always dwell on it because it's not always true. In our Parsha, as we read, this is absolutely not true. The Israelites were afflicted simply because they were unknown and they were deemed not trustworthy. That's it. That's the only sin they've done, is the new king did not know them. So on that, I want to say this point, that when you are different, you stand out. And that makes you a minority immediately. And that can put a proverbial target on your back and even put your life in danger. And that's what I see happening in this Parsha, and that's what sometimes happens in our lives. Now, as you going through difficult moments in your life, maybe some persecution and suffering, don't count on people around you always to understand what's happening. Be prepared that people will look at situations and not see what's even going on. Uh, I'm reminded that when Yeshua was brutally beaten and hung on the cross, that he was hung there by the Romans, some people thought that he deserved it. They looked at him and they even taunted him saying, why don't you come down? Not really understanding even why that was happening. So there are plenty of examples of suffering that really did not, was not brought on for any reason of sin whatsoever. I mean, I'm thinking of the story of Joseph that we just finished reading. And so here he is in the house of Potiphar being blessed by God just because he is a God-honoring person. And yet that blessing turns into a curse because all of a sudden he stands out, he's different, attention is paid to him. And now requests for things are coming in his direction that he does not wish to satisfy. And he gets persecuted. And he ends up in jail. And he didn't do anything wrong. In fact, he tried to do everything right. So sometimes the price of following the path laid out uh, for you is steep. Sometimes that's the price you have to pay, just like Joseph. And others around you will not always understand um, or sometimes even say insensitive things. Maybe you've had that happen in your life. To us, the fact that we're suffering for no good reason seems like a paradox because we don't realize why things happen in our lives. Uh, but we should be joyful about this because actually Hashem is right there with us. A couple of decades ago, I uh, read a book by Rabbi Harold Kushner. Maybe you've read it too. When bad things happen to good people. It, it, it was a long time ago that I read that book, but you know, I still remember some of the points from that book. Uh, it's how it sort of say affected me. It deals with questions of doubt uh, that many quite spiritual uh, and good people have about tragedy and suffering and pain uh, that comes into our life when we seem to be doing pretty good. That when we're living at our best, all of a sudden these things happen. So Rabbi Krishna wrote this book to help people deal with these kinds of logical but difficult questions. And he makes some helpful points. One of them that I particularly remember that I'm not going to get right, so I'm just going to paraphrase it in, in the way that uh, it comes to me right now, is that not all adversity in your life comes because you're being punished or tested. Sometimes it is because you're being punished, and sometimes it is because you're being tested, but don't automatically jump to the fact that, oh, I'm being tested or, oh, I'm being punished. Sometimes we are afflicted by someone just because God has blessed us and um, they see this and they're intending to undo it. Sometimes that's exactly what happens. That's what I see happening in the Parsha. The Israelites are blessed. And Pharaoh says, why are they so numerous? We need to cut down their numbers. So, he, of course, he goes to the midwives and tells them to start killing babies, right? That's his solution. That was the case with Pharaoh. That's the story that we're reading. So if we're blessed, if we're successful, if we're prosperous, 
Good looking, intelligent, numerous. Please add another adjective from your own vocabulary of positive adjectives. Fill in that blank. We might experience outright persecution brought to us by other people. Now, we should be prepared for this and keep our focus on Hashem because He never fails us. He never leaves us alone. There's a saying that I love that comes from Hasidic wisdom. It's just two simple words, but they're so deep. Akol mishamayim, which literally means everything is of heaven. And we should not be quick to despair, but we should always look to Hashem because a lot of times we don't even see His purposes.